We come back now to our final two fallacies. And the last two are in this category, the um, uh, fallacies of clarity. And we're going to take a look at accent and distinction without a difference. So the fallacy of accent involves an argument that rests on improper emphasis placed on certain words or phrases. Uh, and we're going to see a couple of examples of this. One example where we often see this is in advertising. So notice our sign here. It says, wow, cool. And first off, that really gets our attention, right? That's just the, uh, the type set and the design. Just four easy payments of only $19.99. Now, notice where the ad is, is really accenting certain parts of, of what they're trying to sell us here. Four easy and only. They want us to focus on the fact that there are only four payments, they're easy payments, and they're only a certain dollar amount. Now, you notice in the somewhat smaller print there, the actual amount is $19.99. Well, times four, that's nearly $80. So that's actually a pretty substantial price. But by accenting certain words, it really distracts us. And, and makes us focus on something else and, and kind of maybe not even really see what the real deal is. Now, that's one version of the fallacy of accent, but a, another version of accent really is almost the reverse, and it comes from the omission of certain things so that we only see, again, what somebody wants us to see. For example, this woman is writing a, a letter. She's obviously had a bad uh, experience, and... She says, Dear Big Cheat Company, my experience with you was the worst of my life. It was simply unbelievable. Never has anyone treated me the way you did. Your employees were rude, your merchandise was poorly made, and your prices were higher than anywhere else in town. I would never recommend you to my friends. In fact, you should leave town and only be in cities where people appreciate your horrible service. I hope I never see you again. Sincerely, Mrs. Carlisle. Well, that is clearly a negative letter. She's very unhappy. But notice what the company has done. The company has accented certain parts of her letter by omitting other words and then put this on their website. Here's the review page of BigCheatCompany.com. My experience with you was simply incredible. Never has anyone treated me the way you did. I would recommend you to my friends. You should be in cities where people appreciate your service. I hope I see you again. Well, pretty clearly that is not what she meant. And so they've, they've emphasized or accented certain parts by omitting other parts. Now, our next fallacy is called distinction without a difference. Distinction without a difference. And uh, this, is a, uh, this is kind of a neat one. Uh, it certainly falls into this fallacy or the category of fallacies of clarity uh, because it really has to do with the, uh, the sense of the words and what you're emphasizing. So let's take a look at our definition. Distinction without a difference involves an argument that makes a linguistic distinction between two things that are not actually different from each other. So again, the issue has to do with the wording. It's a linguistic, it's a word distinction, when in fact, the things are not really different. Now for the first example of this, we've got to give you a sample of one of the great songs uh, from, from American songwriting. Uh, and it's sung by the gr two great legendary jazz musicians, um, uh, sung by Ella Fitzgerald uh, with uh, Louis Armstrong, uh, legendary jazz musicians. And the song is called Let's Call the Whole Thing Off. Let's take a listen. Things have come to a pretty pass. Our romance is growing flat. For you like this and the other, while I go for this and that. 
Goodness knows what the end will be. Oh, I don't know where I'm at. It looks as if we two will never be one. Something must be done. You say either. I say either. You say neither. And I say neither. Either, either. And neither, neither, and let's call the whole thing off. Yes, you like potato, and I like potato. You like tomato, and I like tomato. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. So, well, you know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> It's a distinction without a difference. Whichever way you pronounce the word, it's still the same item, right? So there's a, that's a classic example in a wonderful piece of American music. But as we go on into logic, let's take a look at a logic example now of, of where this can actually be confusing and, and lead to a wrong understanding. That's why we consider it a fallacy. So the fellow in blue says, I'm leaving the church. I just can't be as good as everyone expects. And the, fel uh, the girl in gold says, well, you don't have to be perfect. Just follow the Ten Commandments, base your life on Jesus, and don't ever sin. Now, no, let's stop and think about that. She's, she's making a distinction without a difference. She says, oh, no, no, you don't have to be perfect. You know, perfect is one thing. But then what you do have to do is follow the Ten Commandments, base your life on Jesus, and don't ever sin. That sounds like being perfect to me. Right, so she's making a distinction, but really there's no difference. And this fellow holding the scroll, he says, well, guess that leaves me out. The fellow in blue says, well, who are you? And the girl in gold says, yeah, you look familiar. And he says, I'm Paul, the apostle. So we want to be very careful when, when you're trying to make a distinction uh, between two things, that they really are, in fact, different. And, and that you haven't just restated the one thing in a different way. Well, this brings us to the end of our logic videos, uh, both from discovery of deduction and art of argument, uh, but it wouldn't be a conclusion without two of our favorite characters. So one more time, here's our kangaroo friend, and she says, we hope you've enjoyed exploring logic. And the dragon says, if you ever need a refresher, remember, the kangaroos and dragons know best. <laughs>